Hello, this is live from Monaco, the Mission Control Center of Solar Impulse TV. And I've been looking at Facebook because apparently a solar plane is going to take off at some point today. Lots of messages on Facebook already, uh, people saying good luck. I've got Bertrand Picard with me, who must be very excited as well, the initiator and the chairman of Solar Impulse. Hello, Bertrand. Yes, hello, everybody. Oh, you've got the wrong way around. You've got the wrong way. <laughs> Hope that doesn't mean anything for the flight. I'm sure it, I'm sure it doesn't well, mean through everything, haven't we? Well, Hawaii is exactly on the other side of the world, so the, all oh, the microphones are like this. That's right, there you go, yeah. <laughs> so we had a big briefing just a few moments ago. We were all in there, the whole team. And, uh, well, how would you characterize, well, the, the atmosphere, first of all? You know, honestly, when we have a weather window for a five-day flight, there is a lot of uncertainty at the end. We cannot know everything. So it's much more comfortable and much easier to cancel the takeoff and say, we don't have, any, we don't have everything under control, so it's better to quit. And... Uh, it's much more risk to take the decision to go. And uh, today we took the decision to go. We accepted that risk. Uh, because we believe the window is good in the beginning. We believe we have a good chance to make it to Hawaii. We believe the timing is a little bit tight. It means if the, if the speed of the wind changes too much, maybe we'll be a little bit late to go before a front is coming close to Hawaii. But overall, People are a little bit stressed, a little bit anxious, but confident that we can make it. And we believe it's the best window we can find to do something like this with as much uncertainty as a five-day flight would, would give. Well, you mentioned the tension. I must say, though, once the decision was given to go, I felt the tension come out of the room. Yes, because the most difficult moment is the decision. When you decide, you can have a part of yourself who always says, if we don't take off, we will avoid that risk, we'll avoid that risk, it's going to be safer, it's going to be easier, it's going to be more comfortable. And You know, in these moments, you, you create your own very dark scenarios, and what happens if all the engines fail and the plane is in the water? Okay, and then you go back to the reasonable decision taking. We have an airplane we have tested, it works, it's fine. We have good team, we have people ready to make it happen. And tactically speaking, we're going to adapt the, the flight every day. We will not make exactly the flight that is forecasted today. Every day we'll have to recalculate. When I say we, it's a fabulous team of the MCC, the weathermen, the engineers, the people from Altran, mission directors. They will all recalculate the trajectory all the time, several times per day, in order to adapt to the reality of what will happen, which is always different than the forecast. So it's this discrepancy between what we hope will happen and what will really happen that can bring some fear. But this is the part of adventure. If we don't accept it, we should put this airplane immediately in a museum and not take it around the world. So we're still saying this, as we've been saying for a long time, this is the moment of truth. This is the moment of truth. It's the most difficult decision we have ever taken at Solar Impulse until now. Okay, well, thank you very much, Bertrand Picard. So we are expecting a takeoff from Nagoya in Japan at 17.30 UTC. That's GMT this evening. We will, of course, be here on Solar Impulse TV with Bertrand. I hope you can spare a bit of time uh, before you head in to the MCC. Um, well, hopefully, Prince Albert of Monaco will be around, your good friend. And, of course, uh, thanks to him that we're in Monaco. Yes, Prince Albert told me he would be here. Great. And I think the timing is perfect for his schedule. So uh, we should have a nice takeoff also in Monaco, not only in Nagoya, but you know, we have to think really deeply for all the team in Nagoya. They have been waiting for this Pacific crossing since seven weeks. In the beginning in Nanjing, then in Nagoya, and they were a little bit blind. They did not know everything that was happening here. We were lucky to be in Monaco and to know all the time what would happen with the forecast, with the team, with all the calculations, with all the simulations. We were really in the action here in Monaco. And this is why we decided with André that I would be here and not in Nagoya, where people were much more distant, to, to far away from what was happening.
Well, we're very lucky we've got great pictures from Nagoya in Japan. Maybe we can take a quick look now. We can see the mobile hangar, which has been the home of Solar Impulse for quite some time in Japan. There it is with the ends of the hangar off now. You can see the plane poking out. And what will happen a little later on is that uh, more parts of the hangar will be removed so we can actually slide the plane out sideways and uh, get it onto the runway. Beton, you want to add something about that? No, I think there was uh, the, the plane was sliding a little bit outside already. Yeah? Already, it's, okay. So they're 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 doing fast, you know. There is also we always speak here of the team of Monaco, but I tell you, the guys there in Nagoya, they know how to work with this hangar to put the plane outside. The ground crew is making a great job, and uh, it's always great, you know, to have this relation with the people who know how to touch the plane. It's almost their plane. And when, as pilot, we, we get in the cockpit, we have this interaction with Daniel and Catherine, who are giving the equipment to the pilot, with Nils Rezer and his ground team, who are pushing the plane outside, who are guiding the plane on the runway. It's, it's fantastic. And we have some great pictures on solarimpulse.com right now. You can see some photos of the team getting ready. We've got a Vine, a little short eight-second video of the parts of the mobile hangar being uh, uh, taken down. It doesn't take very long. It's been designed exactly for that to be put up and taken down as quickly as possible so that we can get Solar Impulse onto the runway for, as I said, a takeoff at 17.30 GMT. Stay with us. We will be back with a full program. Lots of people to talk to, both here and in Nagoya. We'll have a few words with André Borschberg before he leaves as well. He was very keen to have a chat with us. From Gregory Blatt, uh, the man, uh, Warrior-in-Chief. What's the new title for Gregory Blatt? Our diplomat, head of Marcom, Warrior-in-Chief, the flight permit man. Anything else have I forgotten? E everything. Everything. You know, uh, everything. The, the man with the hat. The cat in the hat, Gregory Blatt as well. And uh, we'll, of course, have our initiator and chairman, Bertrand Picard, with us as well. Maybe a few words from Prince Albert of Monaco. He's always happy to speak to us when he comes here. So 7.30 p.m. Monaco time, uh, for the people who don't know how to calculate with the GMT. Don't miss it. That's the, the best thing I can say. It's going to be an extraordinary flight. We're all very confident here. A huge flight of exploration, the moment of truth from Nagoya to Hawaii. I don't know if we keep our fingers crossed, our toes crossed, but we're all very, very confident and looking forward to it. Stay with us on solarimpulse.com. Thank you. 